All right. Now that you've got a basic idea that these are panels and you can always get back the panels that you want, uh, let's do what we came here to do and actually open up a photo and make some adjustments. We're going to start off by learning how to crop photos. This is a really cool tool. It's actually been revamped for CS6 and it's actually really fun to use. There's two ways to open up images that I use mainly. The first is to go File and Open. Uh, I'll deal with the second later. <laughs> but File Open um, allows you to then go and look in your, in your photos. I'm going to go to my libraries. I'm going to go to my pictures. So at this point, uh, if you want to pause the video and go find a picture that you want to edit, I won't be offended. All right, I trust that you're back and you have a picture that you want to edit. I'm going to go find mine. I'm going to look in 2012. By the way, if you see just a list in here, that's not very helpful in a photo editing uh, piece of software, in my opinion. So if you see something like this, for instance, and that doesn't really allow you to see the pictures themselves that you're looking at, uh, you can just click on this View menu option up here and switch over to icons of some sort. And that's, I think, the easiest way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find a picture that I actually selected previously. It's 29 down here. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So I'll select and then open. And it opens up in Photoshop. Now there's a couple of things I want to draw your attention to here. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you now have a tab representing this particular photo itself. If I open another photo in Photoshop, it will show up right next to it as a separate document. Second, I want to uh, draw your attention to this fact that it says the name of the file at a certain percentage. That means that this image right now is scaled down to 16.7% of its full size. It's a couple of keyboard shortcuts that I want to teach you at this point. If you're on a Windows machine, you're going to be using Control Plus and Control Minus. And if you're on Macintosh or an Apple computer, it's going to be Command Plus and Command Minus. And my apologies if my Apple commands are off. I, uh, I'm currently working on a PC right now, so I apologize. But if I hit Control Plus, that will zoom in. And notice that as I do that, my percentage changes. Now, as I'm looking at the photo itself, it is 33.3% or a third of its real size. So I can continue hitting plus until it gets to 100%. And in fact, I can keep hitting control plus, control plus, remember, it's both of them, to go in, I believe the limit is 1600%, 3200%, how about that? And at this point, you can see individual pixels, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm hitting control minus right now to zoom back out. Another thing you can do is control 1, and that will automatically zoom you into 100%. Control 0 will fit the image as well as it can into your current screen. So, again, control plus zooms you in. Control minus zooms you out. Control 1 gets you 100%. Control 0 fits it full screen. All right, another keyboard shortcut here for you. Once you've zoomed in here... Uh, what happens if I want to see more of a picture? Well, I can use my scroll bars. That's very easy to do. I can do that just fine. And in fact, a lot of people like this method. For me personally, my preferred method is to use what's called the hand tool. So I click on the hand tool in the tools palette over here. And this allows me to simply click and drag the image around as if I'm just, I've got a hand and I'm moving it around. Um, that's nice to click on the tool here, but there's actually a shortcut. So if you're on any other tool and you hit spacebar, notice how my cursor turned into a hand. This is really nice to be able to hit my spacebar, get my hand there, and move it around. All right, so I've got an image right now. I'm going to hit Control minus and zoom out just a little bit. And the first thing that I want to do is crop this image. Um, it's, it's interesting right now, but I think that it can be a little more dynamic with a little bit of cropping. Over in the Tools panel on, on the left side, the fifth 
tool down is the crop tool. If ever you forget what these tools are, this is actually a good time to mention this. You hover over the tool, wait for a moment without moving your mouse, and the tool tip will appear letting you know what it actually is. So I'm going to click on the crop tool, and I'm going to click and drag the area that I want to crop. Don't worry about getting it perfect, just do whatever you'd like and crop it. Now at this point, Photoshop does a couple of things. First, it centers whatever you've selected on the screen. So uh, if I adjust this cropping at all, it will center that on the screen. So don't get thrown by that. It's just centering the cropping area in, in front of you so that you can see exactly what you're doing. So you can uh, move these around. You'll notice the grid lines on here. Those are actually uh, what we call the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is, in a nutshell, basically, important stuff should be happening at the intersection of the thirds or whatever you're composing should fit into the thirds on the screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and crop this just like so. Um, I'm going to crop it in just a little bit so that we catch the edge of that sign and maybe a little more space there to sort of match the right side. Catch the edge of that sign and we're kind of good. Alright, now uh, there's a couple other things here. First is up here at the top of your screen in your options panel, you can click on the view and change, for instance, instead of maybe rule of thirds, you want a grid, or maybe you want a diagonal, or maybe you want a triangle, or golden ratio, anything of that nature. I don't know what that is. Golden spiral, that's fun, I guess. <laughs> For me, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the rule of thirds. The other thing that I want to draw your attention to right now is delete cropped pixels. Uh, by default, I believe that this is selected. Um, I generally like to uncheck this, and here's the difference between the two. If you have this checked, and you have delete cropped pixels, and you go ahead and accept this crop and keep it as is, it will shrink your canvas down, uh, the size of the picture, and delete all of your other image data. So if you ever come back to this file, um, you're not going to have the original outlying images, or image. If you uncheck it, however, what it does is it will shrink the size of your canvas down, basically if you want to think of this like a frame on your picture, and it will keep the rest of the picture, but it'll just be hidden. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click this check mark here. The check mark represents that I'm good. I like it. This is perfect. I'm, this is where I want to be. The no smoking sign right here, the cancel button, is actually used to say, get me out of here, I'm done. So if you wanted to say, don't crop this, you'd click the cancel button or the no smoking sign here. The revert button here actually... Um, resets the crop box, but I like it where it is. I'm going to hit and commit the changes. Voila, here we are. I'm going to select my move tool again, and there we are. Now what's nice is at this point, what I was talking about earlier of hiding those pixels, if I click on here and move that image around, notice how it's all still there. It's just been hidden. So I'm going to hit Control Z, or actually I'm going to do Undo Move get back to where I was. And now that's um, a better cropping job right now. Uh, one other thing to note on the crop tool, if you're using this, um, sometimes you want to maintain your proportions. So, for instance, if you want the image to be printable as an 8x10 or a 5x7 or something like that, you don't want to be cropping just willy-nilly. You want to actually crop according to you know a good size. So, if you check this unconstrained drop down here. You can either leave it at the original ratio, so whatever the image was originally, um, 8.5 by 11, 4 by 5, or 8 by 10, etc. Or you can actually do original ratio, uh, where is it? Crop preset? Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted. Sorry. Um, if you have a crop here, already, 
then what you can do is say save this preset and it will be saved or at this point you can actually start okay let me start over again <laughs> I'm gonna cancel out of this crop if I am cropping here um, I can use any of these presets here I can even save a preset but the easiest way to sort of do a custom preset is to just type in what you want so 8 by 10 just like that or if I want 10 width by 8 height I hope that makes sense um, now at this point if I go to resize this it will maintain that constant ratio that I put in here alright so let's go ahead and cancel out there I'm gonna go back to my move tool notice again well again all of the image is still there uh, the second thing I'm going to do is I am going to add what's called an adjustment layer. Again, this is just some basic stuff. With a photo that you've taken, you probably want to crop it, and you probably want to brighten it up, or darken it down, or something like that. Notice on here, it's just kind of washed out, not really exciting looking. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, Control-1, or Control-0, rather, to zoom into full area, full, full area on the screen. I'm going to come over here to my Adjustments panel. In this adjustments panel, um, I've got a bunch of different options. My mouse is not cooperating. My apologies. Um, I've got brightness and contrast, levels, curves, all sorts of good stuff. Um, what I'm going to do just right off the bat is vibrance. So this is one of my favorite ones. This is favorite adjustment layers. This is new as of CS5, I believe. And all it does is add a vibrance adjustment layer into our layers panel, and then uh, gives us a couple of sliders that we can use to sort of jack up the vibrance in the photo. Um, with vibrance, I found that less is more. Um, you know, don't go crazy like plus 100, uh, but you know, just bring it up a little bit. When you're done, you click the fast forward button here on the properties, and we now have a vibrance adjustment layer applied to the layer down here. And I'll get into layers a little more later. But for right now, suffice it to say that I can poke out the eyeball here and turn off that vibrance visibility. So this allows us to see what we're coming from and where we're going to. So if I poke out that eyeball, this is what it was before. Click the eyeball again, and this is what it is now. Not a ton of difference. Let me uh, let me show you what it, in an extreme case would look like. I'm going to jack up the vibrance a lot here. And I am going to actually turn the saturation up just a little bit here. Give us some really nice spray tans there. So if I poke out the eyeball, this is original. Push the eyeball again, this is what it is now. So I'm going to double click on the vibrance adjustment layer here. And I'm going to take that saturation down, uh, back down to zero here. And I'm just going to just boost the saturation just a little bit. So, uh, or the vibrance rather just to give it a little bit of pop that it didn't really have before. Notice the difference, uh, for instance, in the blues, and the flowers, uh, especially these blue flowers down here. All right, now we've got the image where we want it. It's cropped, it's saved. Can I just hit save at this point? Well, let's try. You notice what happens is, um, again, if we go to File, Save, it will, instead of bringing up save, bring up save as. The reason for this is look at this file name that we're on right now. It's the original file name. And we don't want to save over that original file. In fact, this is a foundation principle that I espouse greatly, is you don't want to destroy your files. Whenever you're Photoshopping something, you want to keep your original files. So Photoshop is, Photoshop is smart enough to know that what you really want is to save. I apologize for the jumpiness in the last couple seconds here. I've been accidentally running over my screen recording. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and file and either save or save as at this point. Click save. And I'm going to save this um, as a Photoshop document and then as a JPEG. There's two reasons for this. First, saving the Photoshop document will keep all of my layers intact and saving it as a JPEG later will give me something that I can actually take to the printer. So, I'm going to um, go ahead and save this in the same directory, and I'm going to 
title this graduation edited in progress. Something like that to let me know that yeah, it's not a finished product. But I'm going to save it just like that. Click OK. And notice now that we're in a PSD file, Photoshop document. Now though, now that I've saved a Photoshop document, I want to actually export this as a JPEG, or save this as a JPEG. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to change my format from Photoshop now to JPEG. Notice how many things you got here. You've got pings, you've got raw, you've got bitmap, you've got all sorts of fun stuff. I'm going to choose JPEG just because it's easiest to deal with. And I'm going to say graduation, uh, cropped, Save that, and it brings up the JPEG Options dialog box. Uh, that basically, here's what this means: JPEG is a compression file format, so it's not saving it at super high quality, or, or rather, it's taking shortcuts and sort of compressing the image while trying to maintain as much of the quality as possible. There's a trade-off with this uh, between image quality and file size. Uh, in my case, I don't really care about file size, so I'm going to take my quality all the way up to the top, and off to the right, Photoshop tells me that this file will now be 4.7 megabytes if I save it. For instance, if I take this down to small file, 268K, which is a huge difference. But I'm going to save mine as a large file, and I'm going to leave the format options the same, and click OK. So now, just to recap, we've opened up an image, Using the crop tool, we've cropped it, and using a simple adjustment layer, we have changed the colors. Uh, from here, for instance, if you wanted to click on the black and white adjustment layer, this is a really popular one, just to turn the image black and white. Um, that's a fun adjustment layer. Uh, if I poke out the eyeball, I can turn it off. Or if I click on it and drag it down to the trash can down here, I can delete it. At any rate, go ahead and play around with some of the adjustment layers, some of the cropping, and that's a good, a good place to start with the basic photo editing, changing some of the, uh, the basic colors, etc.